we're going to touch upon a different thing to do kind of, you know, application rollouts and other things as well. So a quick round of question here. So how many of you are, or you know your company, your businesses are using physical machines to deploy application or serve application from? Raise hands. Physical machines? Okay. How about virtual machines? Your code is running on VMs, being served, all right. Containers? Okay, so assuming you guys are on-prem, on-prem environment? Okay. And rest remaining is also all public cloud and private cloud, right? Fantastic, thank you. Let's understand the software development journey or workflow and stages, like how it looks like, you know? It all starts from someone from the business team sitting in a glass cabin, comes to your door, hey, you know, I need to have these features. So this goes to, you know, the, if you have, you know, set up of uh, agile, scrum teams, it goes to product managers, you know, the standard loop, you know, they kind of record your requirements into a scrum, they, they open up stories, and this is then, uh, then assigned to engineers to write codes, right? So eventually these requirements end up into a Jira board, a Kanban board, from where the engineers picks up, they start writing some code locally on the machine, and then once the code is good, they're gonna do some testing, and they are good to release. They produce, uh, you know, container images or exe files or, you know, Golang build files. That's the release part. And then eventually they will ship it out and deploy it. So this is very superficially a workflow looks like in, in software development, right? Nothing, a lot about it. If you go a little bit deeper into it, just to understand a couple of uh, uh, terms that uh, has been popping around. So as I told, it starts from code, assuming that the Jira thing is not considered the part, as a part of this, but yeah, it is, it is a part of the big, bigger circle, like for agile development, your requirements. Begins with code. Code is then converted to builds. You build it, build the things. It's called like agile development standard. Then goes to the next stage, which is integration. I'm talking about microservices. I have, you know, multiple different moving parts of my, of my business. It has to work together in a cohesive module so that we'll integrate it, make sure that it works. My overall application works. It's not just about a single microservice or a single kind of component of it. The overall bigger application should has to be working. So this typically called as continuous integration and doing some testing around it, right? Let's go to the next stage, which is continuous delivery. Here you will kind of produce, you know, uh, uh, the output of what you have built, image file, container image, push it out to registry so that it could be deployed on. So typically it's called like, Continuous delivery uh, uh, stage of your of your application rollouts, and then once you have the new images, your your software bits, your your binaries, you know, you need to deploy it somewhere in the cloud, on private, onto the edge, or maybe onto the you know uh, physical machines, virtual machines. You have to have a way to deploy it. So like you know, it's continuous deployment as a term that we say. And then once it is there, somebody has to keep it running. If your service is down, your customer's gonna call a call center, they will fix it. So it has to be, there will be someone who is always on page duty and, and solve the problems for you. And make sure, you know, it's all, the operations will be taken care of. So this is how it looks like at different stages if you break into a different way. So why CI, CD? Do you need it? I think, I think you need it because it solves a lot of problem, but has covered, I think, almost all of these. But it helps software delivery process efficient by collaboration with your, with, within a team, multiple teams. You know, they collaborate together, uh, they deploy together, right? So it, it helps in, in that part. It gives you automation. It, uh, it, pract it forces to, you have automation in the system so that you use the tools right for your business problems. There are a lot of tools out there, I'm gonna talk about it. Um, but you need to figure out the right tool for your business and then it helps you to release often fixes new features for your existing app. And overall, if you just sum it out, it helps you reduce the cost of your overall software kind of deployment. Talking about tool, how can you practice CI-CD, right? You need to got, you need to have, choose the right tools to do it. Every environment is different, every use case is different, every business needs are different. And there are a lot of tools out there that you can pick up and practice CI-CD and CD. And just double clicking on this one, I have written two things here. CI CD, continuous integration, continuous delivery, and then continuous deployment tools. Burr gave an amazing demo, demo around Argo. Argo comes in the category of CD, continuous delivery tool, right? Jenkins is very, how many people are using Jenkins right now? Dev, test, prod, amazing, right? 
We have Jenkins for, for CI/CD. We have Tecton. Uh, he showed about Tecton pipelines, which is uh, open pipeline, which is based on Tecton. Right? Uh, GitHub and GitLab, they have their own versions of uh, providing CI/CD. So we have a lot of tools available on CI/CD. And it is not the exhaustive list. You know, I can, I can fill this slide with, with all CI/CD tools out there in the market. But that's not the intention is. So talking about the other side, CD, uh, Argo, uh, uh, GitOps, it's one of the most popular uh, tool out there to practice and implement GitOps. We have Ansible. Ansible is there to deploy application, not only on you know, cloud native, but even non-cloud native apps. You still have you know, your physical machines, you still have your virtual machines running out. You, you might be having you know, some kind of edge system around, which is not using Kubernetes, which is not using, we're still using virtual machines. We're not using containerized way to deploy apps. In that kind of use case, you can, you can use Ansible as your launching vehicle of your application. Imagine you, know, you don't have Kubernetes, you don't have containers. You have to have a good, or good way to kind of you know, deploy your apps across Pan-India or, or globally, right? Then other tools like uh, uh, Flux and Spinnaker uh, are also comes into CD category. But why Ansible? Okay, Ansible is a very amazing tool or a very interesting one. It is like a Swiss Army knife, one tool to rule, to rule them all. Irrespective of the, uh, of the you know, uh, genre you are belongs to or, or category belongs to, if you are a dev, you are a DevOps, you are a sysadmin, and if you are a SRE, you can kind of leverage uh, Ansible to automate your stuff. Automate the things that you know, your manager has uh, asked you, your team has asked you to do. Right? You can automate that, bundle into Ansible playbooks, and kind of deploy. Deploy it to any target. And a target could be any. It could be physical machines, irrespective of the OS, Windows and you know, uh, Solaris or Unix, uh, and then virtual machines. It can, it can provision these resources, it can provision virtual machine, it can provision network for you, storage for you, right? Deploying containers as well, deploying on Kubernetes as well, right? It can go and configure and you know, provision databases, right? It can interact with third-party application using web, web APIs, whatever, right? It can also deploy your apps onto remote edge. Ima imagine like you're running, you know, for a given use case, you, are, you have you know, Raspberry Pis installed on various customer locations which are accessible over the internet, and you have to deploy you know, something around those Raspberry Pis, which are not running, running Kubernetes or containers. You can kind of you know, use Ansible to do that. So, um, so that's what An Ansible is pretty interesting in, in those kind of aspects. It, it, it can cater a, a wider variety of, of deployments. So now, let us now see Ansible Automation Platform uh, in action. Uh, and I'll hand it over to Nagesh. Nagesh is going to give you a, a demo where he's going to use multiple things together, which includes uh, uh, Jenkins and obviously OpenShift because it's, it's easier for us to you know, set up OpenShift cluster because of manage OpenShift. Right? It's, it's, uh, rather than you know, spinning, up, spinning up a virtual machine farm somewhere and using it, I could do that as well, but you know, we found it slightly easier. So he's going he, he gonna to go over workflow uh, of, the, of the demo. So Nagesh, over to you. Uh, let me introduce. Uh, the Ansible Automation Platform uh, CD in action. This is the diagram which I'm going to sh show you the while or demo as well. Let me start from the, this is the entry point you can say. Let me start from here. The developers are, uh, the, or the junior developers are, they, they are doing its own job like uh, creating new feature and uh, pushing the th uh, new things into the gate. And later on, how, after this, the, actually the action or the whatever the things will start with the help of the web hooks and all those things are here. Jenkins will detect the thing and later on the, with the help of the build config, so it will build the image and it will push it into the QA container registry. And later on the Ansible automation uh, platform will come in, comes in a picture and it will fetch the, all the files which are present in a gate. Uh, those are can be the manifest files, the configuration files, the playbooks, you can say. And it will launch the deployment into the uh, development cluster. But when you uh, think about the production, things uh, become more like sensitive. The management uh, or the higher authority have the, that permission because we don't have. So release manager is responsible for deploy the things into the production. So we made one mechanism like the manual intervention. Whenever the release manager decide to launch certain 
features into the production. So it will come in a Jenkins, it will log in into it, and later on when he make a decision, later on the pipeline make a CI, CD, and it will deploy into the production. Let's see all these stuffs in a, uh, you make sure before uh, starting this demo and whenever you are, you are following this, make sure you have a privileges of administrator, otherwise you can't do it. And this is the ad simple automation platform. We are short on time, so that's why. No, we are good on time. We are good on yeah. time, okay. Yeah. So couple of things I already installed and configured, so so we uh, we can make uh, things more uh, show you more demo more reliably. So yeah, just wanting to add on this one so on this on this very very screen. So uh, we are into Operator Hub, which is you know another okay. amazing feature of OpenShift through which you can install Operator. You don't don't need to go to any you know a, a random GitHub repository or run a shell script to install anything on OpenShift. It's kind of you know a, a way to install packages on OpenShift, right? Okay. So uh, through here you can search uh, a different operator that you want to install. Uh, 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 on your system, it has nice categories, developer, databases, you know, monitoring, networking, and storage, yeah. streaming. So Ansible is one of the operator available on the operator hub. Okay. Then after you can see, I already installed it. That's why it is not getting anything. So uh, instead of install, uh, uninstall, you will get it one install button here. Just uh, keep everything as it is as a default and install it. And later on, one uh, three. Uh, cluster no pod will be appearing uh, in your uh, Ansible automation platform namespace and also we required a console access of Ansible automation platform. So for that we have to go into the install operator and you can see there I already installed the uh, controller as well. You can see CD Ansible it is showing so uh, let me show you how the exactly things are created in to, by using topology view. These three pods are here. Those actually handle the workload, whatever the pod creation, executor pod with the interaction, interacting with the cluster and all those things. And these two uh, pods will uh, take care of the console access and all the stuff. So let me click on the route icon and it will sh show the uh, console of Ansible Automation Platform. Let me uh, log in into this. Uh, you have to go to administrator to grab the password of Ansible Automation Platform. And meanwhile, he's setting up. So uh, once Ansible uh, Automation Platform is up, and you get to uh, get to its uh, its the UI, you can you can go and provision resources on you know non OpenShift, non Kubernetes environments like you know spinning up a EC2 instance for let's say configuring that instance and with your security policies. You can set up all those rules and all those playbooks once A, B is there. Okay. Uh, you can see a couple of graphs is here because no doubt before this demo and this presentation, I did couple of hit and try. That's why it is getting here. So for this, uh, whenever, uh, first thing we have to create a credentials. The creden Let me go into the credentials. This are the one. If I create a new one uh, and select the open shift, is it getting the? Uh, you can see the three uh, dependencies are here. First is a endpoint, second is a token, and third is a certificate of it. So we can uh, create with the help of a service account. Hmm? The endpoint we will grab it from the console. And this is like a one-time setup. Like Hi, you're, you're, yeah. you're telling Ansible, hey, you know, please use these keys and credentials to and access this cluster. It's like one-time setup, unless you kind of refresh that as per the policy. And toke, for token uh, and certificate, you have to create a service account with the create one role and role binding as well. So uh, whatever the dependencies or whatever the configuration, the authentication it requires to the interact with the, the cluster, it will do it without any um, issues. And, and this file is your like rollback access, access control. You can, mm -hmm. you can let that Ansible, the service account, have just enough 
permissions to access resources of the cluster, right? So uh, you can define all those uh, parameters here. Make sure you have a CLI access. Hmm? I'm in dev game app right now. So hmm? the things are created. It is showing unchanged because I already applied it. And uh, for token and the certificate creation, we have to run this couple of commands. So like this is like a 404 stuff, 400 stuff. Like you know, you need to run those mm. commands in order to get grab the token from the system from the can service account. Can you see account. this? Right. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, can you see this token and certificate? These two files just created right now. So we have to just copy it here and paste it into the Ansible automation platform. And it will store it in an um, encrypted uh, manner. Hey, just go, uh, just go one more thing I'm going to show here. Uh, okay. Go to credential, credential drive drop, drop, drop down. Okay. And, and just slowly scroll it. So look at this one. You know, how many things are uh, supported here? Like AWS and, you know, uh, Vault, CyberArk, GitHub, GitLab, Google, HashiCorp, Insights, Machines, you know. It's it's a very exhaustive list of you know other uh, other services that Ansible can go and connect to and you know make sure that it can go and and launch resources uh, of that type. So uh, it's pretty pretty popular and uh, it's pretty wide. It covers a lot of bigger use case for your automation. Okay. Uh, Please continue. Okay. Uh, for now, uh, after this, we have to create a, uh, create a instance group. Uh, instance group is nothing but them. It will create a one executor pod. Uh, the executor pod uh, must have attached the service account, uh, account and the role which we created. We have to pass into it. After that, uh, the executor pod will be appear into that namespace or the environment, you can say. And it will do the things for us, the deployment, actually. Let me give this as a tag. And credentials are the dev game app. And here exactly we have to give the namespace. We are using for, uh, as I shown you in the diagram, the for development we are using dev game app, one namespace. For production we are using prod game app. These two namespaces we are considering as the two environments right now. So let me give this as a dev game app and the service account which we created let me grab that service account name okay let me just save it after this uh, we have to create uh, inventories inventories are nothing but the inventory fi inventories file where we just list all the host and all the stuffs which we want to interact with it. So let me create one that. It is very similar to the inventory uh, files which uh, we uh, follow, uh, create during the traditional Ansible. Let me give this as a dev. Inventory name. An instance group. Dev container group. Okay. After the saving, we have to create one host here. Let me create dev host. And for this. This is the IP for now. We are using OpenShift cluster. So I'm giving as a local host. And let me go back. Let me go into the. Uh, how many of you are you um, use the 
the ping uh, ping module to check whether that host is responding or not and like that way yes lot of so actually we are doing the same way here let me just uh, select uh, go into the run command and select the ping module and next next and select this demo credential next Okay, got it. Our uh, it is responding from our environment that uh, it is uh, we are able to interact with our uh, op OpenShift uh, Dev game app environment. So what what Ansible did in the background is it has launched a temporary container onto the OpenShift cluster, set up little you know the Python thing that it needed, and then you invoke the ping module, got the response and put it here, so that you know. We are sure that okay, things are in place, things are working. A quick, quick test. Right now, uh, uh, we we have to create a project. Project is nothing but a local SM for the Ansible automation platform. So it uh, uh, get it the things from the gate and uh, doing the things like it will do it very quickly if the things are in locally present. So we have to select gate here, and it nothing but the uh, how. Our configuration file, which are present in a um, uh, git now, we have to just uh, give the repo endpoint and all the steps. This is the repo which I am using. This is the uh, public repo, so I need not to uh, give any credentials. Let me save this. And right now, uh, we have to create a final thing that is the template. The template is nothing but the execute, uh, it executes job for us. And it is a, one kind of a blueprint which uh, executes the things for us and whichever the things we created, the credential, the inventories, the project, and the uh, instance group or a container group. We have to pass all these dependencies to the template. So it will, with the help of these dependencies, it will. Uh, uh, create or deploy the things into the OpenShift cluster. Yeah, and just for the record, don't get, don't get confused, right? We have created a lot of things here on, on stage. Uh, using Ansible APIs, you can literally automate everything what we have shown here, yeah. right? To show you like credential creation, inventories, and you know, templates, and you know, config the Git thing. You, it's all configurable using directly using Ansible APIs. Just to show you guys like how it looks like, uh, what it takes to, uh, you know, uh, Ansible automation the hard way, uh, we're just showing you at the moment. The inventories which we created, dev inventories. Can you see the playbook? Okay, let me. Okay, I have to select first project, dev env, and the environment. The playbook is here, and uh, credentials. One shift, dev game app, which we created just now. And the instance group, dev container group, select. I think we are one, two. And, and here, meanwhile, this is coming up. Here, if you, uh, if you create, uh, assume that you need to deploy this through let's, a different cluster, like AKS, EKS, right? You'll select the right credential type, uh, uh, create a new template, select the right credential type, and your system is kind of ready to deploy it to you know other other destinations as well. Okay. Let me just save it. Our sorry. Instance group. No, actually the instance group will be just an uh, uh, help the, to uh, that executor part to help us to execute the things into the project and all those stuffs are now the, we have a playbooks and all those stuff. What he need to deploy it there, na, he don't have any kind of idea. So we have to give it na, with the help of project and the template, we will giving passing that information to it. Let me just shall, okay. uh, Let me show you how these uh, things will uh, fit into the our Jenkins pipeline. Let me go into the dev pipeline first. And in CD, 
me go into the configuration. You can see, um, yeah, if, uh, before this um, stage now, you have to create one freestyle project and make sure the two plugins are in place, the Ansible and Ansible Tower. These two plugins are not installed. This build Ansible Tower option will not appear here. So the, and this uh, credential which you are seeing here, you have to go into the ma Manage Jenkins and uh, in if you scroll it down, after the plugin installation, the configuration, uh, you have to pass it the endpoint of Ansible Automation Platform, the console login uh, for which we use the credential, the admin and the password, like we, you have to pass it here. After this word, uh, it will get it here. Hmm? And the jam, uh, template ID is nothing but the template name which we just created. Uh, let me just save it now. And right now, uh, let me create one commit and ideally the dev pipeline should start. Mm, this is the same repo which I shown you. Let me make one small change here. Just let me add hash to hash here and save it. Let me check git status. Can you see the readme.md file is changed? Let me add this. So now as a developer, you are just working on a local machine, mm -hmm. uh, doing the changes. And then with the, with the help of Webo, uh, Jenkins going to know that, okay, the repo has been changed. And then it will uh, trigger a PI, do the, do the PI content duplication. If you have any checks in place, like, hey, approval, rejection, close of your app, application deployment, you're going to have that. Okay. Let, okay, let me push the things. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, our pipeline will start. Uh, the polling are in place, it will check every minute whether the ch new changes are there or not. And if the new changes it will detect, na, it will start the pipeline. Unless it is broken somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nagesh is praying, I think. <laughs> oh, hopefully it started. <laughs> oh, well accepted. Yeah, <laughs> yes, uh, it is started. The image building is started. So this is a very familiar UI for you guys, right? Jenkins. So what we're doing, you know this, right? So Jenkins is kind of doing the CI. It's needed. And uh, uh, yeah, it will then hand over the ball to, to Ansible. Hey, Ansible, you know, please take it up and, and go and you know, bust up over the internet and deploy my app onto, onto remote edge as well as to VM or somewhere else where I wanted to. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's favorite, yeah. It's versatile. It's favorite. It's good. Yeah, we love Jenkins too. Whenever the pipeline is succeeded, uh, succeeded uh, after this, the QA container registry, the new image will be here. So let me refresh this. You can see uh, two thirty uh, thirty-three. It is showing right now. So new image is pushed. And hopefully the CD uh, stage is started. Yes, it is started. And let's see what is exactly happening in the Ansible automation platform. Oh, it is running. And let me show you uh, one executor pod which I said you. It appeared. Can you see this? The, uh, this is the I am talking about. <laughs> Look, uh, this pod is deploying our application. When the things are done now, it will d again. It will. <coughs> the, the these are the uh, temporary pods which do uh, does do, uh, job for us, and it will delete it. La, the our application is here. Where, okay, this is all about the dev, dev environment. Where yeah. 
what about for the production? May, yeah, Nagesh, so just to make it more interesting, to show them the app. Is, is, is that app really running or is it just container? With it the is app? running. Yeah, try to play some game. <laughs> show us your okay. skills. The production is lab too. Okay, first test in dev, right? Huh, you, can't, yeah. you can't release once in, it's in dev. It is there, released in dev. It works, right? Okay, yes, it will work. Okay, so with sound, without sound? Without sound, actually we have to plug in the... Okay. Yeah, so the app works for us. Right, now we're gonna push, uh, push a button and uh, our manager will get the approval request if uh, they are happy with the, with the performance of the app or the quality of the app uh, through Jenkins and then they're gonna uh, push the button and then we'll gonna deploy this in production. So Nagesh, please do it. Okay. Ideally in industries or uh, they create a pull request for one environment to another environment or one branch to another uh, branch. So let me create one pull request here. From dev to prod. Yeah. Uh, for dev, I'm considering main branch. And for prod, it's a prod. So follow your company policies with respect to this. It, it varies a lot. Right, so uh, as, a, as, a, as a dev one, you are kind of you know, pushing your new feature onto the main branch or the, or the main line code base and uh, yeah, requesting an okay. approval if you like to. Let me refresh this. Create a pull request. Okay, just a second. Is it doing anything? Yes, yes, the create pull request button will appear. Okay. Refresh? Let, no, no, no. We have to give title. If the multiple commits are there, na, we have to give title. Okay. Okay. Let me just click on a create pull request. And this is on me. You can consider as a senior developer as well. That dev uh, environment is done by junior, and this is uh, given uh, assigned to me for production deployment. Okay, the the pull request is create um, is created. Let me refresh it. I think I merge it now. I the auto pull request. The merge option is not getting. Just a second. Okay. I mean, yeah, you got the idea, right? So, uh, add recent issues. Okay. Is it? Okay, it is. That's the last try. We're gonna running out of time. Okay. So, you. but yeah, you know, it, so uh, so dev is working. We are having some issues in releasing the production, which is uh, not foreign. It happens, right? Uh, so, which is a real software engineering, you know, thingy that we have here. So, if this does not work, then Nagesh has to kind of fix it before he uh, uh, end his day today. <laughs> Okay, hopefully it works. Okay, look at this one. This works. <laughs> Confirm merge. I'm just accepting uh, right now. So pull request is done. And uh, hopefully the prod pipeline will start within a minute. Yes. It is actually it already started and it came to on a manual approval. So uh, as you re guys remember, and uh, that manual, the release manager is uh, responsible for the deployment. So uh, he will log in into the Jenkins and come here. If he uh, uh, about it, he can. And if he want to proceed and deploy the things into the production, he will just click on a proceed and later on the things will start it. And after this, the CD pipeline will also start it as well. Can you see? The CD pipeline is started as well. So, uh, yeah, and at this time you should be uh, you should be getting new pods, 
uh, into the right namespace yes. uh, for which you have configured the credentials. And your app is about to go live in prod. Yes, this is the executor pod, which will deploy. Ansible kind of trying to uh, launch the app. You can also go and see the logs meanwhile. Uh, go to Ansible, uh, click on the uh, view logs. Let's see what it's doing. Yep. It's actually kind of running the YAML file that you're used to with Ansible in a pod, and once it is done, it will self-destruct, and uh, you should get your app pod up and running. And uh, yeah, click on the app, and then it, it, will, it will basically work. Right. So, so that's all we have. Um, okay. We're running short of time here. Uh, app is running, well so, thank you, thank uh, you so much. thanks so much for the time. And just to clarify, you know, uh, um, we, we are here to provide you the tools, right? We provide you the right tools, right open source tool, support open source tool. It's up to you, your business use case, your, your, your needs to choose which tool you want to go on. Burr extreme, uh, explained about GitOps and Argo CD, how GitOps is super simple to kind of roll out from, from New York to Amsterdam to, to, to Bangalore, right? So uh, it's, it's, it's a tool for kind of, you know, practicing GitOps, but if you need a different tool, kind of, you know, provisioning over, over the ground, like, you know, VMs, physical machines, Ansible kind of is, is a great tool to kind of automate your, your you know, uh, sysadmin stuff or DevOps stuff, your, your developer stuff uh, to, to a lot of extent, right? So, so that's all we have, guys. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, we'll take questions in the end. Yeah, that's the idea. That's the idea, right. Please continue, please continue. So, uh, I mean, um, uh, Ansible is, is, is definitely the, the uh, configuration management system available, right? Uh, people used to deploy provision resources, physical resources, virtual resources, uh, virtual resources on the cloud, on non-cloud, right? We are kind of showing you uh, another capability of Ansible that it can also uh, deploy applications for you to a certain extent, right? As long as you can, uh, for example, if you want to deploy something on, on, uh, on XYZ environment, Ansible could be used. If you guys are already using Ansible, right? If you know how to work on Ansible, uh, you, could, you could kind of, before kind of checking out another tool out there to do just application deployment single-handedly, you guys can give a double, double, you know, double shot on Ansible. Hey, can Ansible be extended because I have in-house expertise on Ansible? I've been using Ansible since last, you know, five years, six years. Can we uh, adopt this as our deployment mechanism for for two? So, uh, okay, that's Google Siri or Google Now. Sorry about that. Right. So, um, so yeah, you, it could be used. That's that's the whole idea. Right. 